Now at 11 o'clock, Oregon's just a few weeks away from its first shipment of COVID vaccine. See who gets it first and the challenges that come with doling it out. Plus, COVID restrictions have made it hard for families to see their loved ones in the hospital. To be able to say goodbye and it's okay to move on. But now some hospitals are rethinking those policies. And later, the Oregon doctor who bragged about not wearing a mask while treating patients is now in big trouble with the state. This is KGW News at 11. I know it's hard to imagine, but in fact, our hardest days still lie ahead. On the day Oregon reported more than 2,000 new COVID cases for the first time, we also got concrete info on vaccine doses headed to the state. Thank you for being with us here tonight. I'm Dan Haggerty. Let's start with that light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccine, shall we? Oregon will get shipments of both Pfizer and Moderna vaccines this month. Oregon is set to receive 147,000 total first doses on December 22nd. Both vaccines require two shots. The state will then get nearly 120,000 second doses by the 29th. And we're still working to clarify why there are fewer second doses on the way. All the initial shipments will go to health care workers. After that, they'll go to first responders, people in long term care facilities and their caregivers. Then it's essential workers, then everyone else. Oregon also Oregon's also working to make sure the communities who have been disproportionately impacted by COVID get priority for the vaccine. But as our Christelle Kumway found out, there are still some questions and concerns on how it's going to be distributed. It's long awaited great news. Dr. Red Cummings is a critical care doctor at the Oregon Clinic in Providence. He's excited about the COVID-19 vaccine coming to Oregon. Especially as frontline workers in the hospital, um, this is the first phase uh, with, a, with a long ways to go over the next many months. Two vaccines are coming on the market, one from Pfizer and the other from Moderna. The Pfizer vaccine is already being sent to states before the expected emergency use authorization from the Food and Drug Administration. We're assuming, and, and the state is assuming, with, the, with receiving this number of vaccines that the FDA is going to approve on the 17th of December. But Dr. Cummings says questions remain. What's yet to be determined and what we haven't heard is where we're going to be getting the shots. He is still not sure which of the two vaccines they'll get in his clinic, but he says with either, it's important for people to get two doses. The percentages that you hear about on the, on the news of 90% effective, for instance, um, that depends, that's very dependent on receiving that second booster dose for full immunization. After essential workers and high-risk people get vaccinated, Oregon will move on to giving shots to populations disproportionately affected by the virus. That includes people from racial and ethnic minority groups. Veronica Leonard with organization Latino Network says a specific call-out needs to go to the Latino population. Because we know that our community of all of the communities of color is the one that has been hit the hardest. Latinos make up 13% of the state population and 27% of positive cases. In Multnomah County, black, indigenous and other people of color represent 40% of COVID-19 cases, despite comprising only 30% of residents. Leonard urges health officials to have culturally specific messages when rolling out the vaccine in these communities. We really need to have experts from each community informing those messaging so that we're making sure that we're addressing the specific beliefs and fears that each community may have. Um, I think this will lead to the greatest uptake of the vaccines. While Dr. Cummings calls the vaccine a game changer, he says it doesn't mean we should stop wearing masks and taking precautions. Those things we're going to have to remain very, very diligent about for at least the next three to six months um, until we get enough vaccine distributed to enough of the population to have what we would consider herd immunity. Christelle Kumwe, KGW News. And there are challenges that come with vaccine distribution. First, both of the vaccines have to be kept very, very cold. The Pfizer vaccine needs to be uh, stored in something called ultra cold storage. It needs to be kept between minus 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. The Moderna vaccine just has to be below freezing, which is also very cold. The Oregon Health Authority says storage of the Pfizer vaccine will be one of their biggest hurdles. There's two ways that we can do it. One is that we have some ultra cold freezers in Oregon that already exist. And the, the Moderna vaccine has more flexibility. It can be stored in a refrigerator for 30 days and allows for a lot more flexibility. 
The other challenge will be getting people to just simply take the vaccine. About half of U.S. adults surveyed by the Pew Research Center in November said that they would definitely or probably not take a COVID vaccine, citing safety concerns. But doctors say while these vaccines certainly came to market very fast, they still had to go through the same exact independent safety steps as a normal vaccine would. If you want to know more about the race for a vaccine in Oregon and Washington, put a number up on your screen right now. You can just text the word vaccine to 503-226-5088, and we'll send you a link to our latest stories. Now let's take a look at the numbers from today. The OHA reported more than 2100 new cases. That's well above any daily total that we've seen so far. And sadly, 30 more deaths were reported. That means just over 1000 Oregonians have now died with coded COVID. Now these numbers can be frightening and they should concern you, but we wanted to stop for just a second and put them into perspective for you. Still a very low percentage of Oregon's population has gotten COVID-19. At this point in the pandemic throughout the state, just about 2% of the population has had COVID or tested positive rather for COVID. The rate is about the same for Multnomah County, though it's higher in some places like Malheur County. And of those who have gotten uh, COVID, 1.2% have died and 6% percent have been hospitalized. However, the rate at which these cases and deaths have been shooting up, it has healthcare officials especially worried right now. In the past month alone, Oregon's reported 34,000 cases. That's 42% of all of the cases in the pandemic just recently here in just a month. We've also seen 300 deaths, which is 30% of all deaths. The increasing number of COVID patients has area hospitals rethinking their policies for who can visit. Tonight, the family of a Woodland, Washington woman shares their struggle as Devin Haskins looks at changing policies. 80 year old Patricia Kennedy is in critical condition at Peace Health Southwest in Vancouver with a brain bleed. Her daughters were devastated when they told they couldn't visit. They said once moved to critical care, one of us could come. That was Thursday. Friday morning, sisters Sherry and Cindy say when their mom was moved to the ICU, they were denied. No, absolutely not. No one's coming in. Not even a choice when I said, wait, we were given the option of one or the other. And they said, no, you cannot come up here to this unit. An updated COVID guideline for visitors at Peace Health says patients who are not COVID positive can have one visitor. Peace Health couldn't make someone available for an interview, instead pointing us to their visitation guidelines. I reached out to OHSU and asked if there was something families could do to be better prepared if they were faced with a similar situation. Susan Yoder is the Director of Patient Relations at OHSU. Um, speak to the staff at the bedside and they know how to escalate those questions. We've done enough work that I think most of the staff at the bedside know the parameters for their area and what they can do. Since the pandemic started and now with a surge of patients, hospitals are adjusting guidelines. Each system determines its own visitation policies, so they can be different. Providence told us today they're rolling out new restrictions. One designated visitor is allowed, but some areas may not allow any visitors. Back at Peace Health late today, we heard from Sherry and Cindy. Both were allowed inside to visit and believe they were let in just in time to spend the last minutes of their mom's life by her side. To be able to say goodbye and it's okay to move on. Don't, you know, don't try to fight to come back if you're not whole. In Vancouver, Devin Haskins, KGW News. Westland Police Chief Terry Kruger was fired today following an investigation into the wrongful arrest of a black man from Portland. The scandal dates back to 2017 when then Chief Terry Timmius had officers begin a sham investigation into that man, Michael Fesser, as a favor to a friend who was Fesser's boss. Kruger was involved in the follow up investigation into what happened. Kruger has been on paid leave for months and the acting chief will stay in that same role. Westland city manager said in a statement, I believe the new leadership within the Westland police will help the community to move forward. This is a step toward restoring confidence in the Westland police department. A bicyclist was killed in a crash tonight in North Portland. It happened on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard near Union Court. The bike and a car collided. We don't know yet what caused the crash or if the driver will be charged. Clackamas County Sheriff's deputy solved a big theft operation thanks to a dead car battery. Investigators say two men were trying to steal an armful of stuff from a Coles at Clackamas County Promenade. But when they made it out to get to their getaway car, it wouldn't start. 
They even tried to get people in the parking lot to try and give them a jump, but sheriff's deputies got there first and inside the car. They found a lot of stuff. They found counterfeit money, several credit cards and IDs under different names, a magnetic card writer, several laptops, phones, drugs. Detectives have have tied the suspects at this point to at least two thefts from other stores and a stolen car chase case rather.